Now this is Eliphaz. He started pretty well and he's ending horribly. Verse 5, chapter 22. Is not your evil abundant? There's no end of your iniquities. You have exacted pledges of your brothers for nothing and stripped the naked of their clothing. You have given no water to the weary to drink and you have withheld bread from the hungry. The man with power possessed in the land and the favored man lived in it. You have sent widows away empty and the arms of the fatherless you have crushed. That is not true. And everybody knows it's not true. They're driven to lies by their theology. A theology that says a sovereign God cannot bring suffering on the righteous. That theology drives a person to lies. Which is why it is so pastorally unhelpful. Well, Bildad tries for six verses and Zophar shuts his mouth. Concluding lessons here. Number one. True theological statements can be used to harm people and become false in their divine purpose. I mean, when you read these men, I know you're going to stumble because they're going to sound like certain psalms. You read Eliphaz, you read Bildad, you read Zophar, and it sounds just like some psalms. And the psalms are good. They're true. They're divinely inspired. And you want to say, oh, wait a minute. I thought these guys were bad. They are bad. But they're using a lot of good theology with which to do bad stuff. They're so unkind. They're so impatient. They're so brittle. They make so few distinctions. They don't have the capacity to handle the complexity of life with their little simple boxes of, you're bad, you get bad. You're good, you get good. That won't work. Job has driven the point and silenced them. And we need to know that if we go to that theology, it won't work. Number two, second lesson. Suffering and prosperity are not distributed in the world in proportion to the evil or the good that a person does. Suffering or prosperity are not dispersed in the world in proportion to the evil or the good that people do. Job is right in chapter 21 verse 30 when he says, the wicked are spared in the day of calamity. Job is right in verse uh, chapter 12 verse 4, the just and blameless man is a laughing stock. And therefore, brothers and sisters, let us be slow to judge each other's hearts by whether we lost a job or a marriage begins to falter or a child leaves home or a disease comes or reputation is sullied. Let us be slow. Oh, we know, we know now what that heart is because this and this and this happened you don't know you don't know that's the point number three lesson number three nevertheless even though suffering does not fall and prosperity does not fall according to how much good and evil people have done nevertheless God still reigns over the affairs of men from the greatest to the smallest. God is sovereign. That's clear in everything that's said. Let me read you chapter 12, verses 13 following. This is Job. Job the complainer. Chapter 12, verse 13. 
With God are wisdom and might. He has counsel and understanding. If he tears down, none can rebuild. If he shuts a man in, none can open. If he withholds the waters, they dry up. If he sends them out, they overwhelm the land. With him are strength and sound wisdom. He deceived, and the deceived and the deceiver are his. Now that's Job in the midst of his suffering and in the midst of his complaining saying, God is still sovereign. And lastly, there is wisdom behind the apparent arbitrariness of this world, but it is a hidden wisdom by and large. Not totally, as we'll see when we turn to the speeches of Elihu next. But let me close by reading something from chapter 28. Chapter 28, verses 12 and 13, and verse 23. 28, 12. This is Job. He's near the end. Where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man does not know its worth. And it's not found in the land of the living. So it's not in man. Verse 23. God understands the way to it. And he knows its place. Job, and I'll show you more of this, especially from chapter 19 as we make the transition to the speeches of Elihu. Another, another young man appears on the scene and he doesn't like what Job has said. And he doesn't like what Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar has said. Who is this man? Is what he says better or is it more of the same? So we're going to build a bridge to Elihu by going back to chapter 19 where Job says, I know that my Redeemer lives. And from my flesh, I will see God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I tremble at the experience of Job. I, I do not predict what my emotions would be if you struck me with such boils. I pray that every person in this room would be made ready for the day of their calamity and the day of their prosperity. For Satan destroys us with prosperity as often as he destroys us with calamity. Indeed, in America, I believe more often faith is destroyed by prosperity than by calamity. So help us to be ready. And I pray that you would strengthen our faith and cause yourself to be cherished, treasured, revered, above life and breath and everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.